Justin Fuente's uh, first edition of the Hokies appeared in front of 36,000 fans uh, in Blacksburg over the weekend for the Hokie spring game to culminate uh, 15 sessions uh, for the Virginia Tech uh, football team. We bring in Mike McDaniel from inside the ACC to help us sort out uh, some news. Unfortunately, the spring game and those 15 practices kind of take a back seat to more recent news off the field involving a couple suspensions just handed down uh, here in the last uh, 24 hours. Yeah, it's not a good situation. I mean, a few days after the spring game, Virginia Tech uh, announces that starting cornerback, or at least projected starting cornerback, uh, and sophomore Donis Alexander, as well as Haushan Gaines, a defensive end, uh, both were suspended indefinitely from the team and from the school um, for marijuana charges. Uh, how Sean Gaines was also hit with an underage drinking uh, charge as well. Obviously not good news for the Hokies coming fresh off their spring game and into the off season, um, you know, back into the fold there for the summer. Um, Adonis Alexander projected as a starting cornerback. Now, whether or not he was going to be starting as the number one corner or the number two corner kind of remains to be seen. Um, just due to the fact that Brandon Faison just has not been healthy. Uh, Faison is healthy. He's the number one starter, but Adonis Alexander figured that he would be in the fold as well. Coaches were raving about his progress this spring. Obviously not, not good for the Hokies that they're obviously facing attrition on defense already. Um, obviously the story is still unfolding, but um, Gaines and Alexander have both been hit with marijuana charges and are suspended indefinitely. Um, how Sean Gaines, is a guy that was going to provide more depth at defensive end uh, more than anything, but he had a very strong spring, which culminated on Saturday's spring game with two out of the defense's four sacks on the day. So Gaines had kind of impressed the coaching staff, but he figured to be more of a rotational piece than anything. But two key losses for the Hokies here as they head into the offseason. Yes. Yeah, so, Mike, as you know, to in game situation, despite uh, the strong March and April for the Hokies, uh, basically the, the defensive light, despite uh, the uh, movement to the NFL draft uh, uh, by a couple players, uh, looks uh, in, in Nicholas and Maddie still looks to be very deep, very solid, very strong, could play as many as seven players on the defensive front if you can kind of set us up uh, overall on defense. Yeah, so defensively, the Hokies are still pretty strong up front, a lot of depth there. Nigel Williams is a guy at defensive tackle that could uh, slide in, make a difference. He's already played a ton over his first three years at Tech, but he's going to be a senior this coming season, and he's a guy that's been a rotational piece there for quite some time, uh, filling in when Corey Marshall and Luther Matty have battled injury issues over the past couple seasons. Now with the two of them gone, Nigel Williams is surely going to be a starter on that defensive line. Um, Kenny Canem, obviously a defensive end, is a guy that – you know, kind of had a down season in 2015, but had a really strong 2014 there as he wreaked havoc in the backfield with Daddy Nicholas uh, for a good portion of that 2015 or that 2014 season, excuse me. So Kenny Canem is going to come back here his senior year and try to make a big time difference for the Hokies at defensive end and kind of get back to what he was uh, in 2014. He battled some injury last year, but uh, kind of fought through it and uh, just kind of struggled for a good portion of the year. Uh, the defensive backfield in the secondary, uh, it's obviously up in the air right now. Brandon Faison is healthy. They're hoping to play him at field corner. Adonis Alexander was projected as the boundary corner. Now with him potentially out of the mix, maybe um, maybe potentially gone from the school for good, uh, Tech's going to be looking to fill in his shoes there at boundary corner. Uh, the couple guys that have been mentioned is Greg Stroman is the first. Stroman has played uh, well in spots, and then he's very, he's struggled also. He's kind of been a mercurial player in that regard, and he's really struggled to kind of find a spot on the team. He's been put on offense. He's been put a little bit in the secondary where he's prominently struggled. And then he's also been shown in the punt and kick return game where He's shown that he's pretty athletic. If he gets going in the right direction, uh, he's a very good returner. problem with him is he's running all around the field and uh, never really figuring out which direction he wants to go in. So kind of indecisive, and that's kind of been his issue on defense as well. So if Greg Stroman ends up filling in at boundary corner, that could potentially be a sore spot for the Hokies on defense next season. But if they decide to just kind of work Greg Stroman in where they can in the secondary, maybe at a nickel position, um, 
they've had him at Rover at times as well. Uh, if they keep him there, a guy that could potentially fill in on the boundary is Terrell Edmonds, the uh, younger brother of Trey Edmonds, who has who used to be a running back for the Hokies, has since moved on, transferred to University of Maryland. Uh, he's worked at boundary corner some. He's a guy who could definitely fill in. Uh, and then perhaps maybe even Mook Reynolds, who really played a lot last year as a freshman in the secondary at the nickel position, kind of filtered in with Stroman a good bit. Uh, Mook Reynolds is another guy if Bud Foster thinks he's seen um, a good deal, uh, a good deal of improvement out of Reynolds enough to put him out there on an island by himself there, uh, boundary corner. I think that's a position where Reynolds could potentially fill in the fold as well. So that's for the secondary for Tech. And then at linebacker, another Edmonds brother, Tremaine. So we could have two Edmonds brothers here playing on the same defense, starting potentially for the Hokies this fall. Tremaine Edmonds is a guy who Tech was really happy with this past spring, um, a guy that kind of made a lot of very good strides towards the end of last year. He finished the spring game with seven and a half tackles. So, you know, Tremaine Edmonds there. And then one guy I forgot to mention in the secondary, I'd be remiss to, to miss talking about him, is Chuck Clark. Uh, Chuck Clark is a guy at safety who has made a big difference for the Hokies in both the run and pass game over the past couple of seasons. And he's projected as a starter. The only guy really in the secondary right now who – has a position really locked down. I think the rest of his secondary is up in the air at this point, at least as long as Brandon Faison um, continues to recover from that leg injury. It's kind of plagued him over the past couple of seasons. A uh, 20 to 15 result uh, in the spring game, a glorified scrimmage, of course, in front of 36,000 in Blacksburg. Uh, we note the depth and talent uh, despite the two losses to the NFL along the defensive front. And what that magnifies during the spring game is that you spread out the offensive line starters to two units and it becomes very difficult to block the defense. And that's what we saw mostly on Saturday is that the offensive line struggled. Uh, against uh, a, more, a deeper and more talented defensive front uh, when you split the squads up, especially that's magnified. Uh, you look at the quarterback position, Brendan Motley gets the start. Your thoughts about what transpired on Saturday and really uh, throughout uh, the entire uh, 15 sessions. Yeah, so at the quarterback position, you know, obviously a position of need uh, for the Hokies kind of coming into the year. Brendan Motley obviously had some experience, but with Michael Brewer moving on uh, for graduation, Tech really had to figure out what they were going to do with that position. Um, Brendan Motley, uh, Gerard Evans were the two that kind of separated themselves uh, completely from the pack, uh, according to Justin Fuente. But at the same time, you know, with Motley having the experience, he's a guy that you'd, you might expect uh, to start. But then, of course, Tech brings in Gerard Evans right after Justin Fuente was hired, a JUCO transfer, one of the top junior college players in the country. And it was really a change of pace for Tech because – um, when looking at the Hokies, especially over the last 10 or 15 years with Frank Beamer, they really have not brought in a lot of junior college recruits. And I think that's something that, especially when you're facing a ton of attrition at one position, that you could really look to to kind of bolster your team. Um, and they really hadn't done that. So Justin Fuente, right off the bat, bringing in a junior college transfer quarterback and Gerard Evans automatically spices up the quarterback conversation. Um, Evans looked more impressive than Motley in the spring game. Um, Neither looked great just because of the offensive line uh, struggles that you alluded to. It's been a sore spot for the Hokies over the past couple of seasons. They kind of got better last year as the season went on, especially in the running game. But let's get back to passing the ball real quick. Gerard Evans finished 8 of 15 for 104 yards. He threw the lone touchdown pass of the game uh, to Jalen Bradshaw. Jalen Bradshaw, real quick at receiver. Um, he's a guy, redshirt sophomore. He redshirted. Uh, in 2014, he had a hamstring injury uh, as a freshman and then just didn't really see a lot of time on the field last year. But he's a guy that Justin Fuente has been really impressed with this spring, and he finished uh, the spring game with five catches for 81 yards and a touchdown. So he had a big-time spring game to kind of finish off his solid spring as a whole. So it was very good to see him out there playing well, especially as a Hokies try to search for that third receiver uh, behind Isaiah Ford and Cam Phillips. Um, Brendan Motley, a quarterback, he went 4 of 10 for 19 yards. He had seven carries for six yards, so not not a particularly overwhelming performance for Motley. Uh, quite underwhelming, actually. Um, Josh Jackson, he's a talented freshman, 5 of 9 for 35 yards. And then Dwayne Lawson, a guy that was really highly touted a couple of years back when he was recruited by the Hokies, got earned himself a scholarship. Of course, all the stories about his high school coach becoming an offensive quality control coach for Frank Beamer. 
thought that he would be the heir apparent to Michael Brewer really hasn't panned out that way. And with Evans and Motley kind of pulling away from the pack, if nothing changes drastically this summer, I'd expect Dwayne Lawson to be a transfer candidate, maybe not right before the season, but maybe at season's end here after a 2016-2017 season uh, comes to a conclusion. So that's kind of where we're at, a quarterback for the Hokies. As far as running back, it's the usual the usual suspects. Trayvon McMillan, he's the starter, firmly entrenched. Only had four carries for 11 yards in the spring game, but he's really got nothing to worry about. Where it kind of spices up is behind him um, at running back. DJ Reed is a guy who had a very strong spring and a very good spring game as well. Nine carries for 53 yards. Coleman Fox is a guy who came on and emerged as well, had 40 yards rushing in a touchdown. And Shai McKenzie, a guy that really figured into a fold in 2014 before suffering an ACL injury that he was kind of trying to work his way back from much of last season, much like Marshawn Williams, who is out, you know, out again with his knee issues. Uh, Shai McKenzie, finally fully healthy, finished with six carries for 28 yards and showed good burst as well. So Tech's offense overall, I think, is in a good spot um, at the running back position quarterback kind of a work in progress and then receiver we know who the usual guys are Isaiah Ford is the clear number one receiver you got Cam Phillips figuring in at number two and then Bucky Hodges a tight end who really plays more receiver than tight end at this point anyway he's the third receiver the go-to guy and after that it kind of gets muddy Jalen Bradshaw like I mentioned is a guy that has strong spring but he's an experienced CJ Carroll another inexperienced cat uh Four catches for 37 yards, kind of figured into a slot position for much of the spring. He's a short, quick uh, slot receiver that could potentially see some playing time. And then Tech also has some some guys at receiver and Divine Diablo. And then, of course, Eric Kuma, who are two freshmen who figure to potentially be redshirt candidates um, in the fall. But only time will tell here as summer workouts continue and as the fall progresses, um, you know, fall camp progresses heading into the opener against Liberty in early September. So the goal for any college football program from the end of spring practice to the first week of August when they open a fall camp is to make it there healthy and keep those kids out of trouble. For Virginia Tech, couldn't make it three days without keeping the kids in trouble, uh, out of trouble uh, with Adonis Alexander and Haushan Gaines uh, suspended indefinitely at this point. All right, Mike McDaniel from inside the ACC breaking down Virginia Tech post uh, spring practice. Thanks a lot, Mike. All right, thank you, Mark.